This is my setup to test the TCM on a Mazda 3 2011. That uh, there is the plug, the one with the white frame around it. That's the TCM plug. And I've already replaced it over two years ago. And I think thought it was a fitment issue because I put stress on the connector while everything is plugged in. The code will go away, but as soon as I let go, it came back. So this is the setup to test the TCM. So I took out the battery tray, disconnected the ECU from the battery tray so I could start it. And with cables, there's the battery. And with cables attached to the car, and I isolated the positive so it wouldn't touch anything. I have these tiles here to wrap it around. And then negative doesn't matter, just doesn't, just as long as it doesn't touch positive. I was able to test it. And putting stress on the connector more than not would solve the problem. But I had the old one, which is here. So the old one is on your left and the new one is on the right now this is the new one when i got it over two years ago this is perfectly clear looked brand new had the uh the guy that refurbed it the sticker there but that's totally worn out but i'll uh, post uh i'll edit the video and post uh, the name and the exact date i got it so that discolored over time and I did not hook it up back on top of the TCM, top of the transmission case. I zipped it to the brake line on the uh, firewall. Now this is the old one, which I had to remove the potting or silicone, whatever they're going to call it. And that's a pain in the neck. And there's a guy that has a short video clip of just showing, showing where you're going to resolder the points. And that's what all these, if you see it, the extra shiny ones, I'll have a, I'll post a picture here too, high depth picture, of all the joints I resoldered. And I decided to plug that one in. So did that over two years ago. Plugged it in, and the car had no code, no AT light, no check engine light, no ABS light. I did it two times. Unplugged it, replugged it, everything was good. So maybe it's not a fitment issue with the plug or the pins. It's something with a cracked solder joint on the board, and I was putting stress on the board, which could have been one of these pins here, but who knows. When I was doing it with this one, and it corrected the problem when I was putting stress on the plug. No. To get this stuff off is a pain. There's, don't use a sharp knife, you use something dull to scrape it off, you use the alcohol, you use acetone. And you can see that it looks like someone barfed on it, but got to the points where I had to resolder, made sure they're clean before I resoldered them. And anything else here is just the old potting compound. And if I'm going to reuse this, I have to repot it. I'm going to use silicone. I already tested it. It wasn't conductive. And the only other problem I had with removing this one, which is the refurbed one, I broke the ears that lock it in. So before you take out, try to get some silicone spray between the plug and this because I think somehow it got seized the old one the ears are still good so it locks into place but if you do break in your ears just zip zip it with the plug after to make sure it's a good connection so I hooked up the old TCM there it is hooked up ECU is hooked up, 
positive battery cable is attached to the battery, positive battery cable. Wrap it to isolate it. There's the negative. So, I'm gonna test now, I'm gonna start it. There it is hooked up to the battery. Test to see if the go hope nothing shorts out i think i got everything good yep okay so there it is the at light oh check engine light went away but the AT, no there it is check engine light and you can see how it revs differently so the abs is not on i thought it was oh it is there it is that squiggly line with the car on it so the AT light is on, check engine light is on, and it changed the revs from when it first started. And if you put stress on that connector, if you hear it change revs, it's hard to do it now, but anyway, so I'm now going to plug in the old one that I re-soldered, and we'll see what happens. Now I could do a stress test while it's on and show you, but, well, now even though my pins are, the cable's all the way in, the connector. Anyways, I did it before, you gotta trust me. When I was putting stress on that cable, on the connector, it would change the uh, characteristics of the motor running. So now I'm gonna disconnect the negative. No, no, no power to it. And then I plug in the old one that I fixed. Okay, I hooked up the old one that I fixed, supposedly. Uh, that new refurb, the one that's two years old is there. Hooked up all the cables. I had to isolate that one because there's no uh, potting compound on the circuit board, so I have to make sure it doesn't touch anything metal. Looks good there. Should be fine, right? And just put on that towel just in case it moves after I start it. Okay, that should be good. Okay, let's start it, and got a check engine light, but no AT light and no uh, traction control light. Now this car did have, it's my daughter's car, did have an EVAP code before. But you can see the reds are staying higher longer. You know what? I did that once when I, the first time. Then I plugged it in again. There was no check engine light. And now it's back. So I'm going to pause the video now. I'm just going to move that cable around. Maybe there is a fit of an issue. But why? I can actually check the code. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. So I cleared the codes, there was, one was, uh, they were both historic. One is for the U0101, and the other one was for a small EVAP leak. And it could be also something to do with disconnecting the battery. So now, so all the uh, lights do work before I start it. No check engine light, no AT light, and no traction control light. So I'm going to repot it, bun it all up, drive it for a while, and I'll.
post back. I'll edit the video to say that everything is good. So it is the circuit board, not pin. Because I was watching one video showing a fitment issue. And there are some pins that don't fit right. But some of them are blank. And it's hard to see which ones on the back of the connector, which ones are empty, which ones are not. So it still could be a fitment issue with the pins or a circuit board problem. Hope that helps anybody. Okay, there's all the, it's been potted, the silicone. Just made sure all the gaps are sealed, even around the connector. Gonna probably use some neoprene wrap. It's not a tape, it's a wrap that bonds to itself, bonds to itself, words, bonds to itself when it's stretched and attached to itself. Got to make sure no water gets in here. And I already tested this a couple of times out and just haven't drove it. And there's no check engine light or AT light on or traction control light. This is the old new one that was refurbed. And there is a small, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the pie material has a small crack in there. Not sure if water got in there or not. And this was clear when I first got it. Now I did not put it back on top of the thermos um, transmission. I uh, used some zip ties and put it on the back firewall about here. Actually the plug going down, so this way. And it's still discolored. Don't know what they use as their potting material. Feels like silicone. So this is that neoprene wrap I was talking about. Magic wrap. Bonds to itself, but there's no uh, glue residue on this at all. And if you stretch it, remove the white backing, plastic backing, stretch it, and you stick it onto itself, like in a wrap, it'll bond to itself permanently. So there is the final placement of the TCM, zip tied it to the brake lines, and it doesn't move, locked into place, and that should be out of the way of the battery. Okay, I tried to fix the refurbed uh, TCM. The potting material was much easier to take off than as compared to the original one. And I just resoldered the pins, the headers, or whatever you want to call them. So those are connected for the pins and those ones. I used uh, rosin flux. So that can stay on. You don't have to clean it off. Well, I didn't. And reconnected it to the car, and that did not fix the problem with this refurb unit. So it seems like I'd have to resolder the same points as, as I did with the old one. So just by resoldering, just by reflowing that, it did not work. And the old one that I put in, which I fixed, reflowed the uh, points that I showed you in the pick. That has been working flawlessly for over two months or about two months. And it, that's a confirmed fix. So if you want to try this and you're sort of good at basic sol soldering skills, any comments or questions or things that I should have done, Okay, so that is the refurb TCM plugged in. There is the original that I resoldered and fixed. It works fine. 
Now I'm trying to fix the refurb unit. I resoldered it four times and it, it only works if I use a zip tie. If I don't, if I don't use the zip tie, then AT Lake comes on. So it could be because the ears broke off on the connector or there's a bad pin solder joint cracked on the other side of the board. So, okay, let me, so these are the pins connecting to the connector. And on the other side, it's also soldered on, but I cannot take out this board. If I force it, I don't want to break it. So now I don't know if it's a bad solder joint or the cable connector is not in properly and with the zip tie forces it better connection, but I don't know. But it works this way without the AT light on, no codes. So to me, that's a fix, but I don't, okay, well, it's a fix. I'm taking it as a win. So I got two working TCMs, one only with a zip tie, the other one with no zip ties, other than zip tie to the brake line. I wish I could take out that circuit board to check the other side, but I'm afraid of breaking it. So I'm just gonna keep this one with the zip tie as a backup. And keep the one that's through the brake line as my working unit. Unless I can figure out how to take that circuit board out without breaking anything. But I think I'm just gonna leave well enough alone. And I think that's finally the end of this video. Take it easy. If I help anyone, comment below what you, how, how would you think I should take out that circuit board. I tried, there's two screws, there's four screws. Those two big screws that you see there are connecting the board to the, con the connector. The two screws that connect the board to the case. Took them out, but it does not budge. Yep, so I think I'm gonna leave well enough alone. Any comments? Like the video. I'll get that, all that, all that. Like the video, all that good stuff. Thank you, take it easy.